Voters are going to the polls in Bulgaria for the second time in three months. Elections in the spring were inconclusive. No party won enough support to form a government. This time, two parties have been running neck and neck in opinion polls, one populist and the other pro-Europe. Bulgarians are confronted by alarming revelations of state corruption. Transparency International describes it as the worst in the EU. A last-ditch effort to reach her voters. Elisabetta is a candidate for Democratic Bulgaria, an alliance of pro-Europeans and liberals standing a good chance of becoming a sizable bloc in these elections. What we're first trying to do is stop corruption, because corruption in the country is an enormous, enormous problem. People are waiting for and wanting a new government and will do everything we can. So what do Bulgarians want in their second attempt at voting? I want what everybody wants, less corrupt politicians. I hope that people will grow up and get some real change. The first thing to do is cut the tentacles of corruption. A lot of this anger is directed against the chief prosecutor of the country, who many hold to be a linchpin in the corrupt networks of politicians, oligarchs and the judiciary. We finally want a chief prosecutor who will investigate the real crimes or not try to protect the mafia. This small protest party's program is in its name, Rise Up, Mafia Out. It sparked off last year's mass demonstrations and the will for change. We have to change the justice system, all the justice system, all the police departments, because Bulgaria, uh, in Bulgaria we have no justice. We have no democracy. Whether that change will really come depends on the biggest opposition party, the populist. There is such a people of talk show host and singer Slavi Trifonov. The polls show them on track to win first place, but their program seems somewhat vague and undefined. We fight to change everything we've seen in the past, how the administration works, the whole way of thinking. On the outskirts of Sofia, a final pre-election meeting of the GERB party, whose boss Boyko Borisov ruled Bulgaria for over a decade. He's fighting a losing battle to keep his hold on power. Still, his supporters seem defiant. GERB still has hopes. They made mistakes, but they can fix them, because everyone makes mistakes. But it's likely that the old face of Bulgarian politics will be gone and not see a comeback after this election day. Let's cross over now to DW correspondent Barbara Vazel, who filed that report from Sofia. Hi, Barbara. The previous election in April produced a fragmented parliament that failed to form a viable coalition. Will it be different this time? That is not quite sure, Michael, and that is the big problem and danger in the second round of elections because people, if it then again failed, would become incredibly frustrated. However, the main opposition parties are talking together and they say uh, that their best chance is to form a minority government and let themselves be supported by the former Communist Party, who is today called Socialist Party, whom they don't want to form an alliance with but who might support their uh, program of cleaning up the country and of really changing and renewing this, the political system. Uh, the opposition has a problem in so far as their political ideas are quite divergent. And so it's not quite, quite clear what might uh, emerge at the end. But among Bulgarians, the, the desire for change, the will for change, is, it's really quite strong. Barbara, that report that we just heard from you uh, makes it very clear that voters are exhausted by having to deal with the mafia and corruption in the political system. Give us some perspective. What is the corruption they're referring to and how does it affect people's daily lives? It does affect everybody all the time. If you have to go to a hospital, you have to pay the doctors in order to get good treatment or in order to, uh, to get uh, certain, uh, certain pharmaceutical products. If a policeman stops you in the street, the best thing to do is just to pay him so, some money to get rid of the charges. Mm. If you want to build something, for instance, in the countryside, if you need a, a permit for building, then you pay the guy in the office some money in order to get that permit and so on and so forth. So even for normal 
uh, Bulgarians. Uh, this system is a ripoff. However, if you look at the bigger picture, if you look at public procurement, public buildings, for instance, uh, if you look at infrastructure projects and so on and so forth, the oligarchs and the mafia are everywhere. And it is, as the one lady we saw in the report said, you have to cut their tentacles in order to really get somewhere in this country. You have to cut their tentacles. With the corruption so deeply rooted in the country, how hard will it be for whoever wins to cut those tentacles, as you put it? It is incredibly difficult because what you have to do is really a root reform of the whole system. You have to put non-corrupt people in key government posts. You have to have oversight. You have to have a judiciary that works and, and that really does uh, sort of go after the real crime and that does go, that's not afraid to go after mafia bosses. And of course, there's always a threat of violence hanging over certain uh, connections and networks here. We just have to look at that the United States uh, to uh, revoke the, uh, invoke the uh, Magnitsky Act to go after a, a number of Bulgarian oligarchs. So it is a really bad situation and it will be incredibly hard to work to change the country. But a lot of Bulgarians are willing to participate in this. That's uh, Barbara Vazel in Sofia. Thanks much.